Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno episode 2... We're up to 2 something, let's see, 237 I believe? Yes, 237, and today I have 13 uh, comics to cover, so it's not that much, it was very much a light week this week, so let's get started. Number 13 was X-Men Red, issue 3, and I... I'm sad to say I think I'm going to drop this one. I love Tom Taylor's writing, but I haven't been able to connect with this title since issue one. I just haven't felt the chemistry with the team or the direction on where this book is going. I do like the artwork, but not enough to, uh, I think, continue this book unless a, a big uh, fan favorite character shows up. So I'm giving this one two stars. I just, again, couldn't get into the story. So that is number 13. Moving on to number 12 which is Batgirl in the Birds of Prey, issue 21. Uh, we are leading into the finale of this full series, and I'm just not feeling the impact I feel like I should feel uh, with a series that started out really strong and, and obviously a very popular team. Uh, but I just don't care about the dynamic between Helena and her mother, and uh, I, I want more of the team. I want to see more of their chemistry, and I just haven't felt that in a while with this book. So overall, giving this one two stars, also, the artwork uh, is pretty similar to what we've been getting. It's not my favorite style, especially with the facial expressions, but I guess I've gotten used to it with uh, this title. So that is number 12. Moving on to number 11, which is Avengers issue 688. Uh, I felt like it very much was like every other no surrender issue very action packed uh style storytelling uh but i actually did like the ending where we get to see voyager say avengers assemble i thought that was cool but the rest of it is just like heroes versus villain uh kind of bl black and white type storytelling here uh and i i like a little bit more character driven story uh in my uh comic books and not saying there isn't character moments here there are just not as much as i would like uh with this book and i feel like this issue especially uh but the artwork's always solid and again i did like that final page so overall gonna give that two and a half stars moving on to number 10 which is uh detective comics issue 978 love this variant cover by francis manipool uh and this one it continues with the colony and, uh, you know, Ulysses, which I don't really care about him as a character. There's moments I like in this issue, like Cassandra and Tim interacting with each other, and even uh, Batman and uh, Kate's interaction. But I don't really like the artwork. I feel like everyone's faces felt really small, and it just kind of felt... Uh, too smooth uh, in a lot of ways, the artwork. I just didn't feel the intensity as I feel like we should have with uh, with this title. So, just not feeling the artwork here. And uh, the ending, I guess, was a little interesting, though, with uh, Tim, like, getting himself, like, split apart here. So, uh, turning into me the Tim of the future. I thought that was a good cliffhanger. But I, I also felt like there was a lot of lulls in, in this issue as well. So I'm going to give this three stars, and that was number 10, I believe, we're up to. Yes, a uh, quick countdown this uh, this week. Uh, moving on to number 9, a new book I, I tried uh, on a whim, because honestly, it was a small week, so I said, why not? And that's Exiles Issue 1. Uh, this was definitely one I was like on the border with, on, on the line with, because I was just like, I I like Iron Lad, that's kind of it, and I was semi-interested with the, the Khan... Kamala Khan character, and the one thing that really pushed me, I was like, oh, Peggy's gonna be, like, Captain America in one of these stories, so that's one thing that's, like, pushing me to get up to that issue, uh, but I felt like it just made you jump right in there, um, into the story, and I just could not connect with Blink until, uh, she meets up with Iron Lad, and that's only because I'm a Young Avengers fan that I enjoyed it. I didn't even like the, the Khan character very much either. It didn't feel like Kamala to me, because it's not, but, you know, the essence of that character. So, uh, I gave this three stars. I, I like the ending a lot. I, that 
maybe uh, might bring me, bring me back to, to get a second issue or at least read it digitally uh, as a second issue. Uh, but the rest of it, I, it was, uh, the dialogue was a little rough for me here and it was hard to get into until you got to those Iron Lad moments, at least for me. But the artwork is really well done here. Um, this is the same artist as, uh, I believe, Spider-Woman, so I've always enjoyed uh, that artist's style. Uh, and I think it really works here as well. Um, I think it the artist does a good job at uh, kind of the, the shininess of Iron Lad, which is necessary, and just the expressions that are needed uh, for this book. And the coloring is just really good for this uh, for this book as well. So Exiles issue one gets three stars. We'll see if I'll, I'll pick up another issue for that one. All right, moving on to number eight, which is Titans issue 22. And this actually is a lower book for me, uh, but just because it's such a small week, it, it seems high. But uh, the, I just feel like it's doing the same thing, this book. And I, I didn't really like the whole Justice League not trusting Donna situation. But the thing that made this higher this week is I did like the Donna and Roy stuff. I enjoyed that interaction. But at the same time, it feels like, all right, that's all we've been getting. Uh, in that, and the story hasn't really progressed that much. And, and that I don't like that uh, for the book. Uh, but I did like the artwork. There are moments, especially where Donna is fighting Cheshire, that I thought was really cool. So artwork's pretty solid here. So overall, I'm gonna I'm gonna give Titans issue 22, I believe, three stars. Yes, I did, and that's number eight. Moving on to number seven, which is Sideways issue three, and I like this book. I have a lot of fun with it, but at the same time, I don't know if it's really doing anything new and. It's already fa fallen into a pattern. It's only the third issue. You kind of see where it's going. Is that, uh, you know, our main character has to save his family in some way or in his friends. Uh, and you get a little interaction with them. And then the rest is a random villain that he has to use his abilities and go after. And uh, I just wanted a little less of a formula. I didn't really like the villain either. And I mean, I liked the, the sad story, I guess. But it was a little bit too late in the narrative where for me to really care about the character. So uh, Sideways Issue 3 gets uh, three stars. Uh, again, it's just kind of formulaic at this point, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. It, it's fun superhero formulaic storytelling. So uh, I gave this one three stars. And again, I did. I like the art style for this book. I don't know if I would like it for everything, but I think it fits the, the tone of this book. All right, moving on to number six. I think we were going to be surprised by this one, uh, but Domino issue one. I was actually really looking forward to this issue. It, is, it was my most anticipated issue, and uh, it was not bad by any means, but I also kind of found out maybe I don't like Domino as a character. Uh, I love Gail Simone's writing here. I think she brings a lot of expression to the book, and uh, some of the framing here is so well done. I love the dogs, uh, the dog scenes I thought was really cool. Uh, I really liked a lot of the artwork and just the partnership between Gail Simone and the artist who is... David uh, Boldian. I, I really like their collaboration here. Uh, and the story, I mean, I love Dazzler showing up. I thought that was cool. Uh, that was my favorite scene in, in my highlight. But I think you have to be a Domino fan and really appreciate this. It feels like it goes into her story a lot, and I really rarely read Domino. So I think uh, hardcore Domino fans and uh, I guess X Factor fans will enjoy this to the fullest. But I liked it just for the zaniness of Gail Simone's writing in a good way. I think I, I, she just has fun with this and I and I enjoyed that. Uh, I will see if I'm going to get the next issue. I want to try it again because it's Gail Simone so I would like to at least try out the, the next issue see maybe uh, I'll connect to it to more to it more. Uh, it's more of a connection thing. Definitely subjective. I'd, it's a good comic. It's a well written comic. I just wish I connected to the story more than I actually did. So Domino Issue 1 gets three and a half stars. Moving on to number five, which is Turny Girl Issue 2, which I've been really liking. I really like this uh, psychological narrative about a turning girl's body, especially in this issue where she goes to this comedian and she talks about her own body and, and you see the comparison of, of what a turning girl's been up to. But then you get like this, the... the the kind of psychedelic part of like someone else is actually going on at, sa at the same time. Panels are upside down and that's like the young animal side of Eternity Girl. But I like this, the hardcore um, 
psychological story which is what I'm invested in and, and why I'm picking this up so I gave this one three and a half stars artwork uh, definitely creative like I said uh, if you like young animals I think you'll love the artwork uh, for me I only like certain titles from young animals and mostly because of the characters and I and I kind of just look past the the crazy psychedelic portion of the book so and that's same thing for Cape Carson which I, I really like as well but more for the characters uh, so I'm gonna give this one three and a half stars like I said and that is number five moving on to number four which is Bloodshot Salvation issue what are we up to issue eight and uh, I will say this issue for me was a little slower at first. Uh, we get to see our main character trying to save his daughter. Uh, and Magic just kind of sitting on the sidelines. because like, where's my daughter? I'm just going to stay here until she comes back. And I did like the ending, though. The twist is that it hasn't been that long uh, since those present and uh, uh, future story lines uh because you you think it's uh you know years later because jesse's so much older but we find out that because of what happens in this issue she becomes older uh because of uh, a deal that bloodshot's gonna have to make so uh i really enjoyed the ending and I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes i will say this dives into vertigo mythology a little bit more than i wanted to uh, i was you know the shadow man stuff i wasn't as connected to because i don't read shadow man but it gives you enough information that you you know what's going on which i do appreciate with bloodshot uh, and the artwork's always nice i, I enjoyed this style uh for this book so I'm going to give Bloodshot Salvation issue 8 uh, three and a half stars. And that is number, uh, what was it? Number four. Moving on to number three, which is Wonder Woman issue 44, which I'm actually surprised by because I had problems with this book. But again, it's just a, a weird week where not a lot of books came out. Uh, but yeah, I like the ending though. I really enjoy the ending uh, where Grail uses her Amazonian uh, past, uh, her connections to Themyscira, uh, to open up uh, the ability to go there again, which is interesting that once again Robinson ties it into Rucka's run where Wonder Woman is, hasn't been able to go back to Themyscira. So I'm really interested to see where this goes. Um, the action's also good because the artwork's really good for this book, but I am tired of the Dark Side Grail storyline. Uh, well, I say Dark Side storyline because now Grail actually got pretty interesting, but you know, the beginning of the book, I'm like, all right we get it you know we've we've been seeing the story a lot uh but the action was so good that it gave you enough momentum uh until you get to that awesome ending so i'm gonna give wonder woman issue 44 uh three and a half stars and that is number three moving on to number two a new image comic book and that is the dead hand issue one uh, i am a big fan of cold war stories so uh this is definitely up my alley and kyle higgins is writing it who is currently writing the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and, you know, um, I'm a big Power Rangers fan, and uh, very excited to see where he's going to take Shattered Grid. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I like that we get to see this kind of Captain America-type character go wrong. He always wanted to be a superhero, and the military uh, corrupted him in a lot of ways. And, and we get to see this connected to the Soviet Union and uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union and, and what that time was like uh and i really love the ending where you find out this like american bread town it feels like is actually part of russia i thought that was really cool uh so i really enjoyed this um there are some a lot of exposition scenes it so definitely take your time with this and that is my negative for this book uh, but i love the artwork here i like all the designs i love that it felt like a, a spy thriller like it should uh, and it definitely gave me enough that I want to pick up more. So I gave that one four stars, and that is number two. Moving on to number one this week, which is The Archies, issue six. Uh, definitely the book I had the most fun with this week. I love this cover, too, with Blondie, uh, Betty, and uh, Veronica. And I just like the, the character moments here, where Veronica and Betty really put their friendship first, where, where we get to see Archie makes out with Veronica for some reason, uh, which I guess happened off panel, because I don't remember them making out, but it's also been a little while since this book's come out. It's been a little delayed, but... Betty sees this and Veronica uh, says hey you know what's more important than Archie and you know this whole love triangle thing is our friendship and I, and I really like that moment and they utilize their friendship to bring the band back together and talk to Blondie and uh, 
you know, give them another chance to, to try to find Jughead uh, to be their drummer again. And then the cliffhanger as we get closer to the ending of the series is that uh, the Archies are going to have to go up against Josie and the Pussycats for uh, the Battle of the Bands, and that's going to be a lot of fun. These two Archie, uh, you know, uh, franchises going up against each other. Uh, and I love Joe Eisma's work. I, you know, I, I love the artwork here. I think it, it fits really well, and I think he does a really good job at portraying uh, a musical influence into this book. So, overall, I, I give this issue four stars, and it was my pick of the week. I, I just had a, a fun time reading this one. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic You Know. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.